Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan, and Adam, the Super Bowl is over. That means we are officially in our off season now. We will, uh, as we've told our, our listeners for quite a while, we are now a Monday, Thursday, 6 a.m. drop podcast, two podcasts a week, and we will continue to work to bring some other new shows to the platform. Uh, we got a lot to talk about in this uh, edition. We've got a lot on Carson Wentz. We're going to do start our positional preview, so we might as well start with quarterback because we'll right. be talking about Carson Wentz and then, you know, who's left when he's yeah, not going to be here, yep. of course. And uh, also, you have some interesting notes on the defense that yeah. you've, uh, you've uncovered that I want to get into. And uh, I have a feeling some of the things that we're going to talk about today, Eagles related, are going to tie into what we saw Sunday in the Super Bowl. I mean, to start off, you know, when we were going through our little preview, I said, uh, you know, when you lose your offensive line, as Carson Wentz did, you just can't expect the quarterback to be at his best. And uh, the Chiefs were on three backup offensive linemen, but not just that. They were they had to shuffle guys around, right? Mike Remmers at left tackle. I mean, they didn't just lose decent players. Mitchell Schwartz is one of the best right tackles in the game. Eric Fisher's a very good left tackle. I think he's made a Pro Bowl after a rough start to his career. So that to me, I mean, you saw Pat Mahomes fighting for his life out there. Yeah. I, think I, gained, I think I gained more respect for Pat Mahomes. Oh my like, God. The throw he made in the first, ten, I, it might've been third quarter. I can't remember. It was one of the best incompletions I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it was like unbelievable. You, said, you, you know, it's funny. You know, people sometimes say, oh, the quarterback position is overrated. Really? And Jeff, yeah. Mahomes, you got to think, look, look, look at it this way. He's running for his life with a bunch of backup offensive linemen. Both starting tackles are out. They're playing Andrew Wiley, who's a starting guard at tackle. Uh, that didn't work. And it was a nightmare. And listen, when you don't have good backups, I understand that they were down. I understand they had a lot of guys hurt. But you got a better depth than that. And that, that came out to bite them a little bit. But give Todd Balls credit, D coordinator for the Bucks. Boy, he exploited what was there to exploit. And he attacked and he attacked their protection all night. When you could make Mahomes run for his life like he did, that was big time. And I don't care who was playing offensive line there. I don't know if they could have protected because the way that balls broke down the protection, he knew exactly what was going to happen. He anticipated it. Coverages were terrific. He shut them out. And don't get – look, Kelsey's numbers were inflated because they were behind. They did a great job against Kelsey. The story in that game was Gronk. He was awesome in that game. He was fantastic. I, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Like if you're in New England right now, I mean, listen, they got a lot of, they got a lot of rings out of it, but to see Brady and Gronk basically leave on their own terms and say, we oh, want to go have fun again. And by the way, how about the city of Tampa Bay? The lightning won the Stanley cup. The, De the Rays made it to the world series, lost mm. to the Dodgers, but just mm. being there with that organization, the way they're, they're put together was a heck of an accomplishment. And then they go and win the Stanley Cup. I mean, not the, the, the Super Bowl. That's a pretty good year for Tampa Bay right there. I mean, it's and amazing. there are 12 fans. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was weird, um, you know, the, the stadium because of the COVID issue. So, look, it's an amazing win. Um, their fortunes change, obviously, uh, with Brady. It's just amazing. And I remember talking to the Bucks last year, and they were saying how, listen, Jameis just could have cut down his interception total in half. They clearly would have been a playoff team. But now you get a guy who doesn't turn over very much and executes like no other. Right. And, and, and he's an unbelievable leader and teacher, as Bruce Arian said. He actually is a coach on the field. He just lets him go. He, he, and that includes getting on his players, by the way, oh, yeah. uh, his teammates. So it's a, just an amazing win. And um, it was hard to watch the Chiefs offense, like you said, with Mahomes. Very difficult to watch. But, hey, this is what happens when you're playing with a bunch of backups. Well, I know a Temple guy like you must be Temple proud for Bruce Arians. And oh, Bulls. man. I, I, growing up in Philly – and Todd Bowles, by the way, who joined Bruce in the early 80s as, as, a, as a safety. And uh, Todd McNair and all the guys that he, that he coached uh, either at Temple or early in his career who were with him. What, what a great job there. And, and listen, let, let's, let's – I mean, the guy was retired. I know it was only a year, but the guy had retired. Jason Lake, because of his relationship from their time with the Cardinals, talked him out of it, talked him out of – talked him into getting out of retirement. And um, it's just amazing the job that they did. And also, boy, Jason, Jason Light has really drafted well lately. I understand they had not made the playoffs until this one, but man, I, Godwin Evans, Donovan Smith, Werfs, Marpet. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they, they brought in uh, Ryan Jensen uh, yeah, from the Ravens. Good, yeah, yeah, good player. 
Uh, De- uh, Devin White, who looks like he's going to be a stud at inside linebacker. Was, oh, my God, what a great game he had. Sean Murphy Bunning, 23. White had the safety. He's got a bad shoulder. Antoine Winfield Jr., uh, did, his, did his dad just retire five or six years ago? <laughs> I, I still see his dad hitting Michael Vick uh, over and over and over in the so-called Joe Webb game, which was really oh. the Antoine Winfield oh. game yeah. on a Tuesday night. And the snow that we're getting is reminding me of that a little bit. Um, all right, let's 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 talk, uh, move away from the Super Bowl. We'll yep. talk about uh, Carson Wentz. Obviously, the last time you and I did a podcast, not only did we do a podcast, but we wrote a story about it the day before. And in our story, we said, look, from what we're hearing from some pretty high-ranking individuals around the league is that the Eagles are very willing to trade Carson Wentz uh, and that they've garnered the most interest from the Colts and the Bears. That's what we said. Um, since that, there has been <laughs> – like everybody's coming out of the woodwork with reports now, Adam. I mean, oh my there's, God, some, it's, there's just some stuff out I there. I can't keep that... up with it. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to make fun of people. But but what we had said in that article was, you know, a, a very high-ranking uh, league source um, who is very high up with um, personnel for a team whose team was in the, the uh, Stafford, Stafford sweepstakes. Right. Yeah, he, he, he said to me, he goes, look, the Colts are the Colts could make the most sense of need and fit because of the coaches and the cap space. They could take, they could take two ones contracts. He said, I thought that was funny. Mm-hmm. And he's almost right about that, depending on what the cap is. So look, yeah. And I'm told, okay, so let's get into this, Jeff. All right. Okay. You know, we wrote that piece, which you could see it's still at, at inside the birds.com, but, and you just said the, the Eagles clearly want to move them because Carson, the reason why they want to move them is because once once out, as much as they like to keep him, you don't want a player who clearly wants out and will not be happy here. No matter how much you talk to him, if the guy's convinced he wants out, this is not a this is not a Deshaun Watson situation. Though it's similar, but it's different. This is a guy that does not feel support. We're talking about Carson Wentz here over the organization, whereas Deshaun Watson loves his teammates, likes playing for the Texans, but is miserable because of of the way the team has been handled previously by Bill O'Brien and some of the things that were promised to him, they didn't come through with, and they're their miserable organization. So he wants out. Okay. Carson does not feel the support from the organization, I'm told. It's not just one particular thing. It's several things that have happened over the last two years, and he's just fed up with it. You and I outlined on our previous show, he he's partially to blame for this. Don't just be blaming. Don't point the finger at Doug Peterson only or some other people. Wentz brought some of it on himself, and, some, and, and, and the lack of support also is not, you know, it's not his fault. Uh, some of it is unfortunate, but mm-hmm. both sides are to blame here. That's when I, what I said on the, the last show. Do you call this a separation? Or do you call it a divorce? Right. Well, that's a, <laughs> that's a, it's a really good uh, phrasing that we kind of debated last pod. And uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm interested for it to be done and to finally hear Carson everyone is. speak. <laughs> Uh, I know everyone really is every, right? every fan. I know every friend I have has got season tickets, right? They've all, ch- they've all, I haven't heard from these guys in two months. <laughs> When's this bleep going to be over? Come on, man. I know. Think about it. A lot of people didn't, even when we wrote that story and did the pod, and this is only about now three or four days ago, yeah. a lot of people still weren't convinced Carson Wentz was going to get traded, including Andrew Brandt, who has finally come around. And yeah. he, he's been on, yeah. on ITB TV with us. And listen, when, when he laid it out for us months ago why he didn't think it would happen, the logic was sound. This really shouldn't be happening. It's just one of the Correct. very rare occasions. And like I've said before, I, I consider it a total organizational failure on, on so many levels that so many individuals uh, have a stake in here. But it's going to happen. We, we know it's going to happen. They're going to be moving on. And oddly enough, you know, the whole quarterback factory thing is going to wind up biting Howie Roseman <laughs> in the ass even more. Because when all this said and done, the only quarterback they're going to have on the roster is Jalen Hurts. And did they sign – Anybody to a future? Is it? No, that's it, no. right? Because uh-uh. Sudfeld's, uh, his contract's up too. He's up. Yeah, so, Rest- he's unrestricted. Yeah, so. So they're going to have to prove that they're really yeah. going to be a quarterback factory because they either have to develop Jalen Hurts now uh, with the, a lot of the issues that Carson had, you know, not a lot of money here in this the year, a new coach, a whole lot of new stuff going on. It's gonna, It's not going to be easy. And then they still have to bring it. You know, you got to have a backup. You have to have a, maybe another young guy. No, you, you have to have three throw. quarterbacks. You yeah, can't go yeah, to they're far. Yeah. yeah, they're far from being a quarterback factory. So, so let's lay it out as we get into this new week here. To me, this is about compensation now. We know that there's teams interested, right? What is oh, yeah. it that they realistically think they're going to get? And, and, and I feel like the longer – the reason why this has gone on 
is because they're trying to get more, obviously. Yeah, so as I understand it, the Bears are not interested in giving up two first-round picks, and partially because of, listen, they gave up two two first-round picks to get Khalil Mack and then some. You know, there was they got something back from the Raiders, but they don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. But if you're the Bears, and I'm not saying they need to give up two first-round picks. I mean, let, let, let's face it, I kind of laugh that the people want to compare the Stafford trade folks, right? Matthew Stafford is a proven NFL quarterback. Who's never been benched. Carson Wentz may be very talented, but he was benched. Okay. The, the, despite all that, the Eagles really didn't want to move him, but Carson Wentz out and they want to do right by the player. And they're going to suck it up with the 30 million plus 33 million plus uh, dead money, which is already spent money. It's just, it's on bonus uh, peroration uh, that mm-hmm. they're going to have to suck up here and just live with it. But um the Bears want the guy. I mean, that's you know, based on multiple sources, they want the guy. I just mm-hmm. uh I, I can't see Ryan Pace caving in here. Now, right. if they don't get if they if they're if they don't get once, they're gonna have to do something else. They they they're not, yes, they need to fortify the quarterback position, but they have other needs as well. But quarterback is number one on their draft board here, you know, they mm-hmm. in terms of free agency in the draft. But they got to get someone who could play right now. That, that, that coaching staff and that front office staff, they know their jobs are in peril. They've got to win this season. I mean, they they got in the playoffs only because of one thing. There was a seventh playoff team. Right. You know, the, the new playoff format got them in. And now they got to get a quarterback. So the Bears are in it. The Colts, we know, are in it. Uh, and when we taped, when we taped, wait, let's see, when we wrote that piece, mm-hmm. I, had no, I did not know then if the Colts had talked to the Eagles, but I know for a fact they've talked. Bears have talked to the Eagles. Colts have talked to the Eagles. Jeff, yes. any idea, ballpark, how many, te- you know, any idea how many teams have talked to the Eagles? Yeah, my, my sense from talking to some people, uh, Adam, is that there are other teams involved. I think the Bears and the Colts remain, from what I can tell, strongest, uh, yeah. as we wrote, you know, the likeliest candidates. But I, I have heard that there have been conversations with teams from both conferences, AFC and NFC. And here's, here's the one thing that I think everybody should look out for. There are certain teams, this is just, analytically speaking you and i've covered the league for a long time so we've seen this right there are certain teams that like to lay low and see what the market's like and hear the reports and try to get a feel for what it is and then all of a sudden they like to come in at the end because they think oh you know what you know this has gone on while maybe they're not getting what they want we can sweeten the deal with this or that so i would not be surprised if teams that are normally kind of aggressive um sneak in here you know i mean sometimes yeah, the patriots tend to be like that the raiders can be like that at times uh I, I just wouldn't be surprised i still think we're right on the colts and bears as the likeliest landing spot but the the trade market is as unpredictable in any trade as it can ever be and you just never know who's going to get more desperate at the end and decide that they want to you know sweeten the pot at the last minute but to your point I, I All right, I'm not going to put anything past Howie. He's very good at trades. It's what he does best. I feel like the reason why this has gone on, and, and maybe you people have read other teams' names, is because you're trying to create interest, trying to create a market. I'd be very surprised if the Eagles got two first-round picks. I'd, I'd be Because it would have been done already, in my opinion. If oh, they were getting it off, it would have been done. Well, first of all, they're not getting – the term is clean. There's a term that personnel people use. They're not getting too clean for second first-round picks. They got two first rounders are giving something back, but that remember the Detroit, <laughs> the Detroit deal included the Lions taking on Jared Goff's twenty five million dollars a season. Yeah. So look, there's the, it's there's no scenario unless like, unless they well, I mean Derek Carr is available. That's my understanding. The, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say the Raiders are shopping them, but if you want Derek Carr, who's got two years left on his deal. I'm not saying the Eagles are interested in, I'm talking about other teams. If you mm-hmm. want Derek Carr, go get him. Cause he's got two years left of no guaranteed money in his contract. Right. Um, guys. Well, good... That's actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's got a very tradable contract. Um, so it, it is unbelievable. If, if you go through the other 31 teams, it, there's still so many teams that need quarterbacks, but because once got benched and you just don't know where he is, from a performance standpoint and competitive standpoint, how, how much I understand he wants out. We got all that, but where's he at mentally now? Cause this season he got benched. Is he still got that fire to be great? You just don't know that. Cause you don't, if you're another team, Jeff, you don't have access to him. Right. So how do you know? Uh, you don't, you don't, it's a really good question. And look, I think that 
I think in, in some small way, uh, Chris Ballard on Friday was, was on an Indianapolis sports <laughs> talk radio station and he didn't deny uh, conversations or, or that they're interested in exploring quarterbacks. They obviously need one. Um, the fact that he said that day, there's not going to be a trade involving the Colts was what I felt was his way of calling. Today. He said today. Yeah. 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 He yeah. said today there's not going to be a trade. That was his way. I felt of calling the Eagles bluff on them trying to act like they were getting a whole lot more from the bears or somebody else. So that's why I still think the Colts are they're, they're probably feel like they're playing this pretty well. And oh, if yeah. they can, act, the one thing is that they don't, <laughs> they have what one pick behind the bears. The bears still have the higher, First 20, was pick, it right? 20 and 21 or whatever it is. I think it's 21 and 22. Okay. I know it's early. Something like 20. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I do wonder, do you think, do you think Carson has any say in this? Like, will he, would he refuse to, to go to the bears um, and make it to go to the Colts? I, I don't think so. I know the bears want him. I know the Colts want him. I, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know there are other teams involved as you know, but the, the, to, for me, if I'm if I'm in Carson Wentz's shoes, I want to go to the Bears or Colts. Col- probably Colts won because of his relationship with Reich. Yeah, it's just it it you got to support a guy that was a f- sort of a big brother to you and Frank Reich, and Press Taylor's there. <laughs> Mike Rose, the receivers coach, I understand. You know, uh, you know, my, it didn't work out for Mike as the OC, but he's the receivers coach there. But anyway, getting back to um, sort of how this. You know, I'll be honest with you, when you and I talked off the air. Thursday I thought this was getting done in like a day before any reports came out about uh, it's going to get done soon based on what you and I had heard separately and then we we were switching no- we were exchanging notes uh-huh we look we talked to each other and like geez you know what this might get done like 24 hours yeah yeah you know but now and, I, and I wonder I asked, you know yeah I, I, one thing I was going to add is I asked the personnel director I said hey if this goes on another week what do you think he's like then how he hasn't found his, he, he hasn't found what he wants because this, this would be over right. Everybody knows what's going on. It's no secret to anybody. Yep. You know, and you said at the top here, look, obviously he hasn't gotten what he wants. And wait, look, they want more in the first. Okay. That's a fact. I know that for a fact. Right. I just don't know what he's willing to take that. That's hard to know. It's hard to know. Right. Right. Yeah. Again, you know, I don't put anything past Howie. I can see them getting a first round pick. I'd have a hard time seeing getting them a clean uh, two first rounders, but yep. you know what? You know how he will try and try and try. So well, yeah, but if you right, and if you include a bunch of players, who knows? I mean, you know who who knows? Like uh, I was joking with someone on uh, I don't know if it was on our Facebook board or somewhere. I said, hey, maybe they should package Wentz and Ertz to uh, the Colts. The Colts need a tight end. I'd love to see that. I mean, Ertz doesn't <laughs> get his extension. What's that? Yeah, uh, no, that would be very interesting. Yeah, yeah. What, why not? But and the Colts have so much cap space; it's ridiculous. Yes, they do. Actually, that that's a. If I'm the Colts, I would really be pressing for that. I think that that would yeah. put them. You would have to think that they're right up there in the top three in the AFC, if not the the NFL. Oh, they're so as good. As long as I mean, you're getting the, the 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 rebuilt, repaired Carson Wentz. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, of course, that's the best point of all. You just don't know what you're getting with him. Getting mm-hmm. out, getting a new lease on life is fine. I, I I get it for any anyone who's left a job to another job where you weren't happy. Sometimes you get reborn. Look at Andy Reid in Kansas City. My goodness gracious. Yeah, uh, You know, leaving Philly. But the fact of the matter is, you just don't know at 28 years old what kind of quarterback he is right now. Indeed. Um, before Ali, we finish this off, I, I definitely suspect, even if he's not getting what he wants, that there's probably – I feel like this is going to have – have closure by the end of this week, maybe even oh, in the next yeah. 24, 48 hours. Yeah, I, I, I agree. As soon as you're hearing this early Monday morning, 6 a.m., we appreciate your, uh, your patronage, everybody. It's awesome that you're getting up this early. And uh, for the people, you know, there, there are people who no- notified us. They're on the West Coast. 3 a.m., they're hearing it, man. Their time. We, we love that. But it's, um, it, as we as you transition to our positional preview, Mm-hmm. it's just going to be something different. And and I hope let, let's move over to our, our second segment here, Jeff in a second here, but it's mm-hmm. just going to be different. It's going to be weird for without Carson Wentz here. He's not going to be here. I'm telling you, no way. Yeah, no, that, that pretty much we can say he's not going to be here barring someone crazy. No, I don't even think that barring anything. Can't, he's gonna can't happen. cause he can't, he can't come he, back anymore. He just can't, he don't want to be here. That, that, that's, that was my feeling. You know, the reports came out in, in December and I, you know, kept an eye on it and an ear on it. And I hear so much stuff behind the scenes. It's like, oh, he clearly doesn't want to be here. It doesn't seem to matter what's going to ha- go on. And then you you saw the people talk about, oh, well, now Doug Peterson's gone. I'm like, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's going to play Kane. I mean, it sure as heck didn't. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, let's get into our, our quarterback positional preview. First, of course, go over to uh, our friends at phlsportsnation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all of the Philly sports teams like nobody else. Great podcast, too. Check them out on uh, their, at Twitter. They're at PHL Sports Nation, or just go over to their website, phlsportsnation.com. We'll pause real quick for another word from our great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. All right, and if you head on over to Sky Motor Cars, tell them that Adam and Jeff sent you. By the way, we uh, <laughs> some people. I love our our, our feedback. Sometimes uh, somebody on, from our last pod said because they heard the Merrill Reese uh, commercial and not the Carson Wentz. That's how they knew Carson Wentz was shipped out, as if we had some <laughs> kind of control over that with our commercials. Well, that was pretty well, funny. it it just so happens that I taped uh, that commercial for them uh, a couple weeks ago, so. We'll see. Uh, but look, but here's the thing, though. They deliver all across the country. So Wentz, wherever he plays next season, Chicago, Indy, or somewhere else, you can get his cars shipped to him. There you go. That's awesome. All right, let's talk about our quarterbacks here because after Wentz is gone, as we mentioned, there will be one. The last man standing will be mm. Jalen Hurts. Uh, this is – this. it's almost fascinating because – the quarterback, the only quarterback on their roster was a guy who was a very polarizing figure as soon as the Eagles drafted him in the second round from, from fan reaction to the, 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 the front office coming out and making their reaction and the quarterback factory. It. And uh, then he has to play and he has this really awesome debut and then doesn't win again. And it's just, it, it's, it's kind of a mess to be honest with you. But um, I know, I know how fans are. They will quickly, mentally get themselves into yeah. all right Jalen Hurts is going to sure. be an awesome quarterback type thing and that's that's fair that's fine it's not, you know a you and I, for sure yeah sure sure why not uh, you, you wish the best for him but there are question marks there are a lot oh, yeah. of question marks look what, you what you, I, go ahead no it's gonna say you and I after the draft we were shocked that he went to the second round uh you know we heard from other teams third and fourth round grades um I, I was I was really impressed by his poise I'm talking about Jalen Hurts here. I really was under very difficult circumstances. All the injuries on the offensive line, uh, makeshift receiver core, guys regressing or all around him, and he 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 handled himself fairly well. I understand you know, the Washington game was impossible. I mean, the, the Eagles were playing with a bunch of scrubs on the offensive line, and it was it was very very difficult. And then he got pulled. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, what a disaster that Washington game was. Even boy, another coach, but. Sean Payton criticized the Eagles. <laughs> I don't know if you it's saw it. It's open I'm... field this year on the Eagles, man. It's, it's open season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But look, Hertz is a Hertz is a coach's son. It's a pretty tough kid, hard worker. We'll see how it goes. And now the only the, so, so Hertz we know will be the starter of the season. That's not in doubt to me. What what the question is though, will they bring it someone to compete against him? Well, I would have to think that at very least they bring in someone who's a veteran, right? If they're going to – I don't know if they're going to bring in someone to compete against them, Adam. I mean, I, my, my okay. sense is that when you have the support from the owner and the GM who drafted you in the second round, and even though they, they did not draft him to be the starter, he is now, and they picked him higher than most teams we talked to had him graded because they felt that there was something there that they could work on. Now, they were thinking that a totally different – staff was going to be doing that, but that's how the, the NFL comes at you fast. But I, I think that they would bring in a veteran, uh, a good backup. We know how that they value the backup. I don't think they're going to use another second round pick on a quarterback, but, um, or, or a high pick, but I, I think that they're at least going to bring in a veteran backup, but I don't, I don't think they're going to call it a competition. Well, they might, but I don't think it'll really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know they've, they've done that before, but look, whether it's, in a Wentz trade with Chicago falls coming back or trading for, or signing a veteran free agent. We'll get into our free agent previews later, but this is just really an overview of the quarterback position as, as it stands. Now, Nate Sudfeld's an unrestricted free agent. I can't see any way he would be coming back here. Uh, just as not Nate partially due to the lack of development from the coaches, the coaches did not do a good job with him. He, he just, he looked like a kid who was going to be a – as a matter of fact, they thought internally because he was so good in practices and in training camp at 17 and 18, they really thought they could flip a pick uh, for him, you know, develop him, bring him back, then trade him. 
Sure. But I understand part of it's on him. Hey, you can't put it all on the coaches, but he just never developed. 17, 18, 19, four years he was with them, Jeff. Four years. What is worse, the quarterback factory comment or Jeffrey Lurie when he said that Nate Sudfeld was unstoppable in that one start in 2017? Oh, against, against Dallas. Uh, yeah, because he completed like 80% of his passes, even though they lost and scored no points. Yeah, right. And Frank Wright <laughs> called the game that day, by the way. Um, That's right. That's right. Uh, look, all right. So, so again, they're going to add three, two more. It'll be Hearns, a veteran, and then could be an undrafted free agent they like, could be a draft pick. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. We're only in February here. Well, let me we'll ask you this, though. Let me, yeah, let me ask sure. you this, because we're kind of glossing over one thing. I, right. I, I did it myself accidentally. I said they're not going to pick a quarterback in the second round again. But oh. <laughs> if they do have two first-round picks, the sixth pick and, you know, whether it's the 21st, whatever, whoever gets involved, yeah. if they do have two first-round picks, do they consider – drafting a quarterback six overall or packaging them up to move up to two or three, or I don't know if they can do that, but do you I don't, think I have they... no idea. Cause w- I have no idea who they like or don't like yet. It's just so early in the process. Yeah. We don't, we yeah. just, just Wentz is still, as we speak here, he's technically still on the roster. So we, Wentz has got to be moved. I don't see any way they will do this trade without getting a, at least a first round pick back. I just don't. So as, as a matter of fact, the only th- way this thing takes longer than another week is if, if Roseman does not get a first round pick back at, at the very least, Mm-hmm. they've got to get one. I mean, I mean, I understand Wentz is not the same player he once was. I get all that. He got benched. It's certainly true, but come on, right. man. You, you got to, they, well, they got to get a first round pick back. By virtue of the fact that there's at least two teams that we know have definitely talked and other teams that are also, you know, in the mix because they have interest, yeah. you should get a first round pick because yeah. there's a bidding war. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You would think. All right. So, so yeah, so that, that's, so not only do they have, Jalen Hurts as their only quarterback after they after the dealing of Carson Wentz but now you're talking about a new support system a new coaching staff it's really going to be Nick Sirianni Kevin Petullo and Brian Johnson that's going to be the the new version of Doug Peterson John DeFilippo Frank Reich right you know it's going to be that that cocoon that's going to have that'll be Jalen Hurts that's going to be really hard to duplicate It, it is uh Eagle Source told me it was like coaching Camelot and 16, particularly 17. It's just Jeff Stalin's still there. It's very important. Do Staley, unfortunately, is not. And they don't have, as you and I speak, or they have not hired the running backs coach, correct? It's the only coach. Yeah, that's coach. the only one. Yeah. 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 They interviewed, we, as we reported first, uh, Stan Drayton, who is the University of Texas running backs coach, who also, I'm told, interviewed with the Bears. He is staying. Mm-hmm. I, last, last I checked, I heard he is staying with the University of Texas. Yeah. Um, so, so right now, this this staff, uh, Shane Steichen, as you mentioned. Oh, I a, forgot to to uh, mention him as well. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Oh, I, I, I'm wrong. I guess you didn't mention, but you just no. I said me. Petulo. Right. Right. You didn't. Right. So I'm glad I mentioned him. I didn't even. I just realized you didn't. So. Right. Anyway, who cares? Uh, Steichen's there, and you mentioned Petulo, who's 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 um, Sirianni's right hand man, mm-hmm. and Brian Johnson, who's a really good young smart coach, who's. Some people thought would be a college football head coach someday. Uh, he was the former quarterbacks coach slash OC at University of Florida. So they, they've got some good coaches there, but the guys that in 17, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. So they've got a lot to to prove here. But um, and, and Hertz is there right now. You would think, Jeff, Hertz, to see if you disagree with me. Hertz is going to get, I look at it as a one-year trial. If he does well, then you got to think he's going to be the guy for the future. I would think so. I think that's a fair assessment. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, God, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I know. I agree with you. I was really impressed with uh, leadership, poise. Hey, by the way, did you see his video, the Alex Lemonade stand? Oh, it was uh, awesome. awesome. Oh, my God. Awesome. What a, what a fantastic thing to do. Big, big so credit great. to – big yeah. up to him, man, great. for that. So that was cool. Easy to get behind for, for reasons like that. But I will say – and this is not fair. I'll, I'll preface what I'm about to say by saying it's really not fair. Different teams, different situations, different environments. But I remember what I felt about Carson Wentz, his rookie year, after those first three games that he won, Cleveland, uh, Chicago Monday night, and then destroyed, came home and they destroyed the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? He won his first three games. And he looked I don't even like. I remember that game. Oh I, I my god! You don't remember game. him? Oh, he destroyed. No. And I remember that one play at a touchdown 16, to Sproles. 16, okay. 
where he he escaped the pocket and did like a sidearm flick to Sproles and Sproles oh, turned wow. it upfield and Damn. yeah, it was like yeah, it was just. Okay. Well, you remember the Cleveland game. I mean, he scored a touchdown. He drove them down for a touchdown. Yeah, and I ar- argue with Joe Banner that the throw to the blo- the throw over the middle to Matthews. He, yeah, yeah. He and I argued. Oh yeah, the Eagles smoked the Steelers thirty four to three. Okay, I just don't. Yep. But that game, it's funny because the Browns, <laughs> Jimmy Haslam, was getting to the elevator, and I think he either punched his hand or punched the wall because they lost twenty nine to ten in Philly, and I remember him being pissed off. Because they pet, they didn't want once. You remember? Yeah. But he, yeah. So, so the learning. So, so wait. The, the point I was making was. Yeah, sorry. I thought he was a uh, clearly showing that he had some special abilities, he did. and he that he was going to be the friend. And so, again, not fair. What I, I I liked what I saw from Jalen Hurts, but at no point, even in the win against New Orleans, which was heavily dictated on him taking off and running a lot, which yeah. you're not going to do every single game, I didn't. S- leave that game thinking wow this is going to be the next big thing you know what i'm saying it doesn't mean he can't be i'm just comparing sure his first couple of starts to carson yeah. and and my mindset there so there's a lot a lot to be proven here from jalen hurts right and then I, I would say the arizona game he really showed me something we're talking about hurts right now i thought he did really well to, to keep the team in it a lot of tough uh, several yes. big throws in that game and remember he got off to the bad start uh, the fr- your first couple throws, and then he hung in. They got a safety. Didn't he take a safety? If I'm not mistaken. They were down 16 nothing. So yeah, two touchdowns and a safety. Yeah, they were down and he, I thought he did a really good job. Come that that is tough to do, man. As a rookie, that was on the road. Good job him. Yeah, for, that's true. Th- one thing I do want to say about Wentz, and I've learned the hard way. Just because a guy looks elite doesn't mean that he won't handle success well, or will, or won't handle success well. Mm-hmm. So what you have to do as a fan is give me four years. Let's see how he handles adversity. I understand a lot of this was extreme. They they drafted the, court, the quarterback in the second round, the injuries, issues with the coaches, players taking shots at him, whatever it is. Coaches maybe taking shots at him. Who knows? But whatever it is, how does he handle success? The answer is not right. very well. That's I think true. he handles success well. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a really – you know, I was having a discussion with someone uh, about that, and what this person said to me was – no, no one could really see it coming the way it ended like this because oh, no way he had this great sophomore year should have been MVP. Then he gets yep. hurt and he really worked like crazy to come back from that injury knee injury. Yep. And he gained a lot of respect for how hard he worked to come back and then had a pretty good year. Maybe not in the wins law, you know, he, but his, his, his completion percentage went up eight points the following year in 2018. Like, and then people respected how he was able to handle that first article written about him. Uh, I think Philly voice, Joe Santa, Santa Liquido, but it's, it, it, this thing has not been a slowly developed, like something happened from last year, meaning 2019, I guess um, till now where the accountability, the leadership, the, the taking hold of your issues and working on them, the, what you just said, your response to adversity it changed with him. And I, I wonder if it's just because he got tired of having to deal with adversity. Uh, some, some of it not brought on by himself, you know, like injuries are, are, are injuries. It's not like it's his fault or maybe having certain guys rip him in the media uh, anonymously, which is never a good thing. Um, maybe he blamed the, I'm now I'm speculating. Maybe he just got tired of, as you mentioned, like you get tired of the organization. You don't feel the supports there. You feel like, you didn't support me on the field very well. You didn't support me off the field very well. And I've tried to do everything I can. And now I'm just all about the, what's best for me at this point. I, it was just a weird conversation because this was not like he was always like this. We know he was always, um, uh, he came in hard headed about things, but he was able to excel in 2016, 17, 18, despite that he was able to take to some coaching and then something happened over the last two years, Adam, that he became different about it. And uh, it's it's just fascinating, really, the way it happened. He, he, he did a great job. He summed it up about a, at least as good as I could or even better, man. That yeah. was really good. So It's just unfortunate. Uh, yeah. It really is unfortunate. It's sad. It's, it's, I'll be a fan of his. If he goes to Chicago, the Colts, wherever he goes, I, I hope he does well. He yeah. clearly needs out to get out of here in Philly. Fans have had enough. Um, he's had enough of, of uh, the organization. It's clear that's why he wants out. And it's a – it's going to go down to me as one of the biggest Philadelphia sports tragedies of my lifetime. Big worst football that I can remember. I'm sure folks are older than I am. will tell me that I'm wrong. That's fine. Right. Um, it's really sad. This never should have happened. It's someone this gifted. I agree. Oh boy. 
I just I called it an organizational failure in the last podcast, and I and I completely sad. Not, yeah, sad. people misinterpreted some of that. It's the trade itself is not the organizational failure. It's how Carson went from being an MVP caliber quarterback yeah. to what to not even wanting to be on the team and not not even looking like a top twenty five yeah. quarterback. I mean, it's Jeff, just unbelievable. Right, right. Oh, he's not. He's not even cl- he, He's a uh, bottom ten. Qu- I was just talking to someone with another team about that. We were, we were exchanging notes at Wentz, and I said, dude, I said, I, I don't think he's – I think right now if he had to rank him just on performance, he's somewhere between like 18 and 25. Yeah. Well, I mean, he finished with like the 34th worst uh, – 34th I mean, ranked passer. But, 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 yeah. it, but, but uh, the one thing I would say and just in closing with Wentz is that it doesn't mean he can't revive his career and actually thrive with, with – he also needs good coaching. I the agree. coaching here was pathetic last season. I, I've taken, you know, I've criticized Wentz. If you've listened to us since this whole season, I I said he should have been benched before he was. It, it was it was terrible. But sometimes guys get a new lease on life, coaches and players too. And he needs one, and I wish him well. I hope he, uh, I, I hope that uh, the staff that coaches him mm-hmm. kicks ass because he, he needs he needs to be supported, but he also needs to take responsibility as well. Yeah, you know, maybe he has a Carson Palmer like, uh, you know, Carson, you know, had a good start with the Bengals, then he got hurt, then he got soured on the organization, went to Oakland, spent two years there, was all right, nothing great, nothing terrible. Then he went to Arizona and he became a mm. MVP candidate. He didn't win it that year, but I think the year they went to the Super Bowl, he got hurt, didn't he? He never even towards played. ACL game. Yeah, yeah, had another yeah. ACL. but but he right. wound up, you know, he was he he remade himself. So we'll see if that yeah. happens with with uh, hey Carson wins Carson Palmer. How about that? Uh, All right, download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code ITB to get all of your sign-up bonuses. That's promo code ITB to get all of your sign-up bonuses only with the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app. Uh, All right, I'm excited to move on a little bit this because you told me you've got some really good stuff on the defense and the new coordinator that you wanted to get into a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, we know they're going to run a 4-3. That's not even remotely in question. The question is, are they going to run the wide nine? So, they may run a little bit of it, but that's not going to be the philosophy. The philosophy anymore. It's it's going to be a forty three front, and they're going to be more read and react, hmm. which is totally different from just get upfield in the wide nine. Just just play the run on your way to the quarterback is the joke about the wide nine that people have always had. But for the most part, it was really good here in terms of getting pressure on the quarterback. You could never argue they were second in pressures. I think last season, mm-hmm. the problem was the secondary uh, lack of talent just not enough. And uh, we we talked about it uh, for two years, actually with Jim Schwartz, lack of pre-snap and post-snap disguise. He just didn't believe in it, which is absurd. Um, Tape showed it can't be argued against. It's a fact. Uh, This, this thing will be different under Jonathan Gannon. There will be Mm -hmm. pre-snap disguise will be post-snap disguise. And now, now we're going to see, I don't know enough about this. I just got this, this, this past week. So I need to learn more about it. But digging in, trying to learn because I've moved on. For the, we we were we we've, we've killed the quarterback position already. We, there's nothing else. We've emptied the bucket. We, we we gave you everything we know. We know the teams won them. The top two teams are going to be a sleeper team, as Jeff talked about. That the probably six to eight teams that have either called the Eagles or the Eagles have called them. Whatever, it, it's going to happen soon. So we'll move on from there. But the defense, the the philosophy of the defensive line is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be just the same. Just get upfield. So. We'll see how these guys and, and here's the thing. If we don't have a May and June on the field, which we may not, the commissioner just talked about it last week, mm-hmm. uh, may not have access to the players again, which I don't understand why they won't. They were able to get through the COVID offseason or COVID se- regular season you know, pretty well, considering everything. They had players in their building and they were able to play. Why can't they have players in, in May and June, Jeff? I don't know. Hopefully they do. I mean, I really think that if you can be doing what you're doing now and had the Super Bowl and you made it through the season that you should be able to have players on the field for for OTAs. It would make sense to me, but we'll see if anything changes there. So what I'm wondering, though, is does that mean they're going to two gap a little bit or is it just going to be not as aggressive of a one gap? Yeah, one. it's rare for a 43 to two gap. Yeah. But I just, just, just so what's the takeaway of this? Well, the takeaway to me would be, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking me, but no, no, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll answer I'm, anyway. Well, go, no, go ahead. I think that, that this is, they've been doing the whole wide nine thing for quite a while now. I mean, going back to, to, to Washburn there. So these, you know, guys like Brandon Graham and I don't know, Vinny Curry, maybe he'll be back again. Well, no, we'll but th- no, Fletcher th- Cox. 16, 17, 18, 19 to 20, they did. 
under Jim Washburn, they did. And then they chip, they were 34 front, which was oh, right, game. right, right, Billy right. Yeah. Um, but for most of these guys like Graham and Cox and, and uh, Hargrave, who just started to really find his rhythm in that one gap scheme, they're all going to have to learn a totally new scheme or not a totally new scheme, but I think that getting just that out of you, yeah, just the, the, you know, when you're so used to flying at the quarterback, flying at the court and someone says, we're going to dial that back a little bit. That's, that's both a technical and a mental change. And, and if you don't have enough reps at OTAs, that could be difficult. Yeah. So I'll learn more about in the coming weeks. That's the first note I got on the defense is mm -hmm. uh, more of read and react. Uh, look, if, if Gannon is taking from Mike Zimmer, well, they had a pretty good, they had a formidable front for years. So I don't want to, I don't want to read too much into it, but you make such a great point. The, the responsibilities are going to be a little, little different and the, the techniques going to be different most likely. So we just have to see. I, that's why I said it would be great if they can get on the field. Because, mm -hmm. if, as you said, if, if they've been learning one way for many years and now it's a little bit different, I don't know how much different. I'm not an expert at this. I'm just telling you, repeating what I was told by someone who would know. So we'll see how this impacts the pass rush. I, it's, I mean, we're in February, folks. So we don't know much yet. So we'll see. The, uh, one thing I would love to find out, too, is is, is he going to alternate between cover one and cover two? Um, is he going to play a, a lot more two safety, two safety looks, two high safety looks than Jim Schwartz would do? Because Jim would only seemingly go to it as a last resort. Yeah, kid, well, he was a big cover three in, in 2019. Mm -hmm. It's a little different in 2020, but that may have been because of the the injuries in sector. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Th look, there's a lot we don't know because Gannon has not been a coordinator before. We don't know what he prefers. Does he need like a super smart guy like Roddy McLeod? Who there's no guarantee Rodney's going to be on the team this year. We'll have to see. Right. I've got some guarantee, not a lot of guaranteed money for the season, but we need to learn more about Gannon. What, like, I, I have a pretty good profile of Sirianni and his coaches on offense, but defensively, I'm learning as we go here. So we'll, we'll, we'll know more, but that's what I have on the defensive line. All right. That's good stuff. Um, when we do our next podcast, we'll be moving on to our next position preview. Um, I don't know if we should do like, you know, like we just right, do quarterback. Back. Should we do, should we, well, I was going to say, do we do all offense and then get that way? Or do we do one offense, one defense, one offense, whatever? I yeah. Know. I'd like Let's... to probably stay on offense. Probably. All right. Probably you want to stay on offense? All right. Yeah, we'll do yeah, running just, back then. You know? Yeah. Running backs. Oh, here's another one. I actually have mm -hmm. to look. Someone asked me this. This is a great question. I would doubt it, but I, you know, I could be wrong. I don't think they had a fullback with the Colts, correct? I don't think the Colts had a fullback. Yeah. I don't think so. And I, I'm assuming, because it's funny uh peterson at 16 i'd heard in the offseason he, he was going to bring a fullback in i heard then, that too and then they junked it yeah that's yeah. kind of weird i don't know because yeah. andy still uses a fullback every yeah the while, sausage right? <laughs> andy, sure. <Yeah. laughs> that's yeah. right all right all right excellent so um we'll be back again our next podcast will drop thursday morning which i'm sure oh i'll tell everybody listening now if carson wentz is traded before right. thursday morning you and i will be doing an emergency oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. um uh, live stream yep. that uh, everybody yep. will know about yep. when it's time. So just keep a uh, keep alert to our Twitter accounts at Kaplan NFL for Adam at Jeff Mosher NFL for me at Inside Birds is the official Inside the Birds Twitter account. And then make sure you're checking out the YouTube page because that's where we uh, usually live stream things from. So we'll have everything for you wrapped up. And that'll do it for this edition of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. Big thanks to our producer, Hunter Brody. Check him out on YouTube. His channel is called Sports Talk with Broads. His Twitter account is at Broads81. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the bird.